This episode is sponsored by NordVPN. If there was one thing to notice about a stingray, it would perhaps be that they have an excess of horizontality in comparison to their heightedness. That is to say, they're in possession of a certain flatulence. Jerry, that's not what that means. You just mean they're flat, right? Okay, they're flat. This body plan evolved from one that was shark-like. The pair of pectoral fins that hang off the sides of a shark expanded outward and up around the head. A bit like if you said, stick them up. As these fins grew, they became much more complex, evolving into a skirt of what looked like long, many-jointed fingers. A covering of connective tissue and sheets of muscle create a strong but flexible structure, and this opened up some new possibilities for movement. In the shark, muscles in the trunk move the tail back and forth horizontally, and the pectoral fins are just used for stabilization. In stingrays, most of the trunk has disappeared, but those pectoral fins have the ability to move in wave-like patterns, and that movement pushes against the water in a way that creates thrust and lift. Now, some members of the ray family, like the guitar fish, sort of went halvesies on this. But the stingrays, they were all in. Because this new body plan also gave them the ability to hide. And many stingrays are very good at hiding. Well, pretty good at hiding. Sort of <laughs> left some bits out there, didn't they? But I get it. I mean, when I do dishes, I give up right around the silverware. Still an A for effort. Stingrays can bury themselves quite quickly. And that's because they know how to swirl the water just right causing the sand to be distributed evenly over them. All right, minus the tail. Sure, on occasion you'll find one that sucks at it, disguised more like a floppy sombrero of the sea. But hiding is not their, sorry, but hiding is not their only defense. The top part of stingrays can often look a bit bumpy, and that's because they're bedazzled with these little nubbins called dermal denticles. They're made from enamel and dentin, so they're essentially body teeth. And sometimes they look like little fangs, and they can get quite spiky spiky. Certainly some degree of protection there, but come on, for some of the larger predators, they're essentially like croutons in a salad. Just provides a little extra crunch. <laughs> so over time, a little patch of these denticles on the tail evolved into something a bit more substantial. I mean, at rest like this, it looks about as dangerous as an extra pinky. But underneath that layer of skin, you got one of these. Looks like an arrowhead with a stutter. <laughs> Whatever it looks like, it's got some bad intentions. They keep growing and are replaced if they shed or break off. And these grooves here are lined with cells that create venom. So it's not like a needle, more like a shiv soaked in toxins. If an ocean robot happens to step on them, f***ing ocean robots, they raise their tail up. The back part of the tail is a bit more floppy floppy, so just raising the tail exposes the stinger. From there they can strike upwards or slash from side to side. When they make contact, the skin on that stinger tears. And then you got serrated edges and leaky venom and things break off, it's a mess. I mean, it might seem like overkill, but that's what you gotta do when you're shaped like a cookie. You play hide-and-go-seek to the death for 300 million years, of course you're gonna make some modifications. For example, the eyes, they went to the top. Two little periscopes for that sand submarine. Look a little like a drunk smiley face on a hoodie. And then right behind the eyes, you got the creepy holes. The science hippies call them spiracles, whatever. What they are is sort of like an internal snorkel. So they can pull in water from the top and get it to their gills, which are on the bottom. Along with the rest of their face parts. Might seem like a design flaw to have your mouth pressed into the sea bottom like that. But here's the thing, stingrays love to feed on bottoms. <laughs> Shush. And when they do it, it can look a bit like mining for spice on Arrakis. Nerd. What they're doing is searching for worms and crustaceans and things like that and then power washing them out of their habitats. And look at that, they can get all cookie monster with that sh**. Now to find the food, they can't use their eyes, what with their being on the top and all. But they can use their sense of smell and their ampullae of Lorenzini. Those little dots there are specialized organs that can detect electrical fields. Here, you can see one reacting to an electrical field in that bottom circle. Surprise! <laughs> Nothing's there! <laughs> Disappointing, like finding a bottle cap with your metal detector. Now once they've blasted whatever they're after out of their little sandy hidey holes, they gotta get their food up into their tum-tums. As you can imagine, there's quite a bit of sucking involved. Look at this one, it makes a little tent over the area, so none of the good stuff gets away. But no matter what your technique, you're getting a bunch of sand coming in the front door. They can blow some of it out the gills, but let's just say that stingray feces can get a bit gritty. Now if they have to hold on to something or crack it open, stingrays have a fabulous waterfall of teeth. They grow in from the back and sort of cascade over that ridge. In most species, the teeth are fairly smooth, designed for crushing. Except during mating season when the male's teeth get all pointy. Not really for eating, it's more like a fetish thing, you'll see. But some of the bigger stingrays, they're eating whole crabs. But their jaws are designed more like a nutcracker, just kind of open and close. 
Bust open a section and suck out what you can, then spit it out and repeat. It's like a very poorly executed alien abduction. <laughs> if you use the internets, which I know you do, you should have a VPN. One, for privacy so no one's tracking what you do and what you look at, which is happening if you don't have one. And two, when you travel other countries, they can't block your fave platforms and contents because for all they know, you're still at home. And you know what? Prices for things like car rentals are sometimes set differently in different countries. And a VPN lets you browse as if you're in those countries and find some deals. But VPNs aren't all the same. NordVPN is not only the fastest, but comes with a host of features dedicated to keeping you safe online. You know, you get one of those emails or texts pretending to be your bank or whatnot. NordVPN's threat protection can recognize many of those deceptive links before you start chatting with a scammer. Ever wonder if one of your less than awesome passwords got figured out? Dark Web Monitor lets you know if they're getting passed around up on that dark web. NordVPN is worth it. Go to nordvpn.com slash zayfrank. You can click on the link in the description. Get a NordVPN two-year plan and you'll get four additional months. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Do it today. Go to nordvpm.com slash zayfrank and sign up for a great service. And while you're doing it, you'll support this show. Where were we? Oh, right. So that's the basics of stingray eating. But of course, you're going to have some overachievers. Like this freshwater stingray here. It even looks a bit cocky, doesn't it? Just showing off at this point. This sort eats insects. But you'll notice that there isn't as much spitting and sucking as that crab tornado we just saw. And that's because they've evolved jaws that can chew a bit like we do, with a back and forth shearing motion. Looks like someone mumbling with a cigar in their mouth. Well, looks like we're gonna have to do this the hard way, doesn't it? <coughs> oh, swallowed it. <coughs> but there's some rays that don't give a shit about what their mouth parts can or can't do. They're gonna eat whatever the hell they want. Wedge fish, for example, have these pebble-shaped teeth. Perfect for crushing up little things like snails or clams. But when science hippies took scans of their jaws, you know what they found? Friggin' stingray spines. And not just one oh you learned your lesson kind of thing, a whole crap load of them. They're eating stingrays and they're into it. it. Looks like they're smuggling shivs at the wrong end. Electric rays have a bit of that I'm gonna do things my way attitude as well. Look at this one using its back fins to just walk away. Slowly. I mean, if this was charades, the clue would be try me, motherfucker. Because electric rays have evolved these two organs on either side of their face. And those are filled with these modified muscle cells, which are stacked in thin layers to form what is essentially a battery. And when they turn that on, they can concentrate the charge on their prey by cupping their pectoral fins. Want to hear what that sounds like? <laughs> Sounds like a wet one. In terms of what it does to the fish, well, you can see what happens. Mummy, one of the fish is sleeping. And look at the ray caught in the act. No, when I got here, the fish was like that. No, I was trying to save him. You know, defib. Stat. And they've got another party trick. Look at that. They can extend their whole mouth in case they zapped something in a crevice. And I'm no expert, but I'm just saying, I think that stingray just yawned. Now, the cow nose ray doesn't have an extendable jaw, but it clearly wanted one or something like it. There, you see it? That thing flapping around on the front? Never seen a cow nose do that, I'll tell you what. Those are called cephalic lobes. Wait, stop. <laughs> Look how cute it is. It looks like a little frog. But remember, the mouth is down here. These are those lobes. What happened was, in some rays, the front part of their pectoral fins started to split off and do their own thing. In the cow nose, you can see how those bits have separated and basically formed new fins in the front of the face which can move independently from the pectoral fins. And they can use them to manipulate some of the food they like to eat, like oysters. I mean, that one straight up stole one from his buddy. Those lobes can help position the oyster closer to the mouth and sort of form a dome around it to help with the suction. Some rays like mantas kept going with this concept and they have huge cephalic lobes. Now mantas had enough of this feeding on bottoms business. And instead, over time, they became filter feeders. And those cephalic lobes help funnel plankton and small fish into that gaping mouth hole. And their gills have these special structures that keeps the food in and lets the water pass on through. But you swim around with your mouth open like that, you're going to swallow a whole bunch of crap. So they have to really clean things out once in a while by everting their anus so it's inside ounces. You can call it a suna. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Kill me. Instead of waving the edges of their skirt around like stingrays, mantas move with a more flappy flappy motion like a beard. Their pectoral fins are reinforced and sturdier, and they got a whole bunch of muscle. I mean, you try strapping a couple cafeteria trays to your arms and flapping around like that, and these ones gotta keep moving. You ever see how small a plankton is? I mean, the serving size must be in the millions. So if they find a big cloud of plankton, they'll do this. 
bunch of backward somersaults instead of plowing through it and then having to turn around. But when you get a whole bunch of mantas together, they can get creative. In what's called cyclone feeding, they swim in a circle and create currents which pulls food into the middle. Now when mating season comes around, things can get a little exciting. This male eagle ray came in a little hot. The civilized way to do it is to sort of queue up behind the female, like these mantas here. When you swim around like that for a while, I'm sure it's dull, but if you get picked, then all of a sudden you're rubbing up on each other and flirting and biting. And apparently there's a good amount of biting. I mean, you gotta hold on to something to get the parts lined up. But when you do, the business part of it takes about 20 seconds. There, you just saw it. For mantas and eagle rays like this one, it takes about 12 months before you pop out a little baby like this one, all rolled up like a burrito. No, Jerry, I don't want to show that clip. Fine, go ahead, but it's a double standard. Oh, really? It's cute? All right, I'll get naked on a window and squeak my junk around on some glass. See if that goes viral on Instagram. You know what? I'll paint a face on it, too. But they got nostrils that look like eyes. I can make my belly button look like something. It's bullshit. What do you mean, which part's the junk? No, not the leg things. Those are part of the fins. It's those two tiny little things all the way in the back. Yeah, they're sperm tubes. No, that's what I'm saying, Jerry. It's a double standard. What? No, I don't have two of them. Jerry.